Here's a picture of a horse that had a hospital pad. It's uh, kind of an extra thick pad that was actually, um, the shoe was drilled and tapped as, as was the pad was drilled, and it was actually mounted to the bottom of the shoe. So the shoe is still nailed onto the foot, but with three bolts, that, that pad can be removed and the bottom of the foot can actually be treated for a case like an abscess. Here's a picture of a bar shoe that was placed on a horse's foot that um, the horse uh, got its foot actually caught in a cattle guard and caused damage to the hairline. There's always going to be damage to that part of the foot. There's always going to be a, some scar tissue that's there. Um, but you can see that this has just recently happened. That part of the hoof was removed so it wouldn't catch and tear and, and, and pull itself apart. And then we went ahead and put a bar shoe on the foot to actually spread the distribution of weight out. Uh, th those shoes can be handmade. Um, in this case, um, because it was quicker, we chose to take um, a, a bar of a piece of flat steel and actually arc welded it in, in between the heels of the shoe. So the shoe was fit to the foot and then we just measured and actually arc welded a bar in between the heels of the shoe. Here's a picture of a horse um, that has actually lost some of the support of the back of the fetlock and the back of the heel. And the toe on the horse's foot is actually rocking up off the ground. It's actually rocking back on the heels. And this commonly happens when we have suspensory sprains, which is real common in, in X race horses. Um, the suspensory ligaments get torn or ruptured and, and break down and so they lose that support and the foot begins to rock back. Here's a picture of that foot that's trimmed. We actually didn't remove that much toe. We actually mostly re removed quarter and heel. And that foot is actually resting in a very normal position, but probably in a couple weeks if we didn't put a shoe on that foot, it would be back to rocking back again. So what we did is we put a very long extended egg bar shoe on there and we call it an egg bar shoe just, just simply because of its shape, but it actually extends behind the heels of the foot, back in the area of the bulbs, and actually causes additional support. There's a bottom picture of that same shoe, and you can see how far it goes behind the back of the frog. And we also beveled the toe on this to actually make it a little easier for the horse to walk. Um, this is the same horse a little later. This horse ended up developing abscesses on both sides of the right front foot. So um, a quick remedy for that was just to weld a bar across where the abscess in the foot is located. Again, it was just arc welded in. But the nice part about this, almost the idea of the hospital plate, is it makes it very easy to get to that area and treat it, but yet it's covered up so if he steps on something, he's not going to hurt that injured area of the foot. Okay, so just to wrap up our, our session today, um, here's a picture of uh, one of the ponies that we saw earlier. We know that some feet are repairable and it's quite amazing with what we can do with one trimming or one trimming and one shoeing. Um, sometimes there are just certain feet that are not repairable. Here's a distorted um, hoof off of a, off of a cadaver leg um, where the hoof has actually folded and become very misshapen because of founder. And it was actually so severe that the lower half of the coffin bone was actually gone and had actually demineralized and been absorbed back into the blood supply because it was such a severe case. Um, so this, this horse ended up uh, donating himself to, to science and, and we're fortunate to get to see that when we have severe cases like this and they go untreated, that we really can have a lot of damage. That's a picture of a, of, of a normal foot and what the coffin bone should look like. And you can see how the other one has been demineralized and is no longer there. There's a number of printed resources that are available out there. Uh, we showed you uh, a videotape of the physiology um, of Dr. Chris Pollitt's work. There's just so much information out there. I think one of the things we have to be a little careful of, some of the information that's out there on the internet isn't always the most accurate information. Um, but as we study, 
and learn more about the anatomy and the physiology of the foot, we can understand what practices and principles that are out there and which ones we should think about adopting. Here's a picture of uh, one of the famous Bell Mountains on the Bell Ranch in New Mexico. It's a ranch that uh, when I was teaching down at the school in New Mexico that we used to go out and shoe the horses for. The ranch is actually about 300,000 acres. They have their own zip code. That ends our presentation on hoof care for the day.